Marion Murphy and I'm an e-learning technical officer with the Department of Technolo Technology Enhanced Learning here at MTU in Cork and um, I will be doing our session today on an introduction to H5P. Um, I'm joined by my colleague Ruth who will be helping to um, field any questions you have or if you have anything to add in the Q&A. Um, if you want to say hi there Ruth. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks, Eric. And thanks for your help today. Um, so um, I'm going to get underway. Um, so as I said, this is an introduction to H5P. Um, and the overview of the session today, we're going to look at what is H5P? Uh, what are the benefits for students? Uh, what are the benefits for lecturers? Um, some of the we look at some of the H5P features um, or as we refer to them as content types. Um, I'm just going to show you a demonstration of how to access H5P on Canvas. Um, I'm going to look at some examples um, and uh, do some demonstrations on those. So um, I've picked three um, content types to demonstrate today. They're the accordion, the image hotspot and the multiple choice question. So I'll show you an example of each and then do a demonstration of how to uh, create those. And I'll also give you um, just uh, show you what um, another content type, which is an interactive video um, where you can add interactions um, on the video as well. And then I will um, uh, show you some resources that you can use um, to create some H5P content yourself. So. Um, First of all, uh, what is H5P? So essentially, it, it's what we call an, auth an authoring tool, um, which is used within, um, in this case, within Canvas to create interactive content and learning activities for students. Um, H5P is used widely in educational settings um, and it helps to enhance learning. And um, the content is responsive and mobile friendly, so it's consistent across um, multiple devices. So what are the benefits of H5P for students? Um, so firstly, um, engagement is one of the, the main, I suppose, uh, benefits in that um, there is a diverse range of H5P content types that will help to make learning more enjoyable and interactive for the student. Um, Active learning is a feature of the um, H5P activity content uh, type where uh, students are actively participating in their own learning. So it creates greater understanding and retention of material. Um, on a specific activity, students will get immediate feedback so they can understand their mistakes and learn from them in real time. Um, the H5P content types are accessible, so it promotes an inclusive learning environment. Um, as I mentioned, they're flexible um, in that they're responsive and can be accessed on various devices. And another main benefit is inline interaction in that the student doesn't have to leave the learning, um, the module content to engage in the um, H5P activities. So what are the benefits for lecturers then? So um, you, can you can chunk the content down into manageable, you know, bite-sized pieces, um, which helps to, um, I suppose, manage the, the learning uh, for your students. Um, it helps to en en enhance student engagement. Um, as, as H5P is responsible and accessible, all students can interact with it. Um, there is over 40 uh, different H5P content types, so different learning styles are catered for. Um, you can manage the H5P uh, content directly within Canvas, so you don't have to be using multiple platforms. And um, there's a low learning curve in creating um, H5P content types. And also um, H5P provides detailed reporting features. So then what are the H5P content types? So we have, uh, they're categorized into layout content types where um, this is where you lay out and present the material uh, to your students to navigate and explore. And as I mentioned, the two layout content types I'm gonna look at today are the accordion and the image hotspot. 
Um, and then you've got activities, uh, activity content types where you create active uh, learning activities for students um, that they can interact with and they can, in certain circumstances, receive feedback. Um, and the one I'm going to demonstrate there <coughs> is the multiple choice question. So then <clears throat> um, just some examples on the layout content type. So um, you could have a dialogue cards where these are text based turning cards. You can upload um, a, a course presentation and add interactions. Um, you can upload slides and add interactions then to the, the um, course presentation. Um, you have bar and pie charts. You have a column, which is basically where you have, you're grouping uh, multiple H5P content types into one layout. Um, you have the accordion, which I mentioned, and you have the image slider where you can have multiple images on a slider. Um, then on the active, some of the activity content types, um, you have an interactive video, which I'll, I'll show you at the end. Um, this is where you can upload a video and you can um, add interactions to the video. You have uh, the drag and drop question type. So uh, students can um, drag um, maybe text into a drop zone. So to kind of demonstrate their learning, uh, you have the image hotspot, which, which is where you create an image or you upload an image and add multiple information hotspots to it. You have multiple question types. So true and false, uh, multiple choice, fill in the blanks. Um, and you've got flashcards where you can where, create flashcards that have images paired with questions and answers. So then how to access H5P on Canvas. So when you create um, a page on Canvas, when you're adding your uh, learning material, um, this is what your page would look like. And you have, see across the top here, you've got the rich content editor, um, the con Canvas rich content editor. And then you've got the H5P icon here, which you just uh, click on there. And then it will bring you into this screen here where um, you just click on add content and this uh, menu of H5P content types will pop up. Um, then you can just um, put um, whatever content type you want to use in the search bar and that will uh, it'll pop up and I can, I'll be demonstrating that there live in a second. Um, so just uh, on the examples and demos I'm just going to show you today. Um, the first one is the accordion and this is a vertically stacked expandable item. So um, I suppose the reason for using this is you can reduce the amount of text that's presented to the student. Um, the student can decide um, which headlines they want to take a closer look at. So it's more kind of personalized for them. Um, and it's excellent for giving an overview um, and then a more in-depth explanation if they want to uh, click into that. Uh, the next one then is the image hotspot. Um, this is where you upload an image and you can add um, information hotspots to to the image. Um, so for this example, um, I will be using a SWOT analysis and just um, the student will be able to click on each of the information points to, um, to find out more about each of the elements. Um, and you can add as many hotspots as you want to the image. Um, and then the multiple choice uh, question is where um, obviously, and it's an assessment tool, the student can, is given feedback um, uh, immediately on their, their answers and you can have singular multiple correct options for a question there. And I just have one correct option on the one I've chosen for our introduction session. Um, and then I'm just going to show you what an interactive video looks like. Um, it can be, um, so this is where you upload a video and it can be enriched with different interactions. So explanations, imagery, and fill in the blanks or uh, multiple choice questions. You know, there's, there's many different interactions you can add there. Um, you can set the interactions to appear at uh, certain points during the video and to fade away then at certain points as well. Um, and you can have an interactive summary at the end of the video as well. So um, that's our um, just just ex uh, explanation. I'm just going to uh, go over now to my um, canvas and sorry. Canvas has disappeared. Sorry, one second there. Okay. 
Yes, I have it here. Can you just confirm you can see that there, okay, Ruth? It's super, Marion, showing your Canvas screen. Okay, perfect. So, okay, so um, first of all, I want to show you what the H5P accordion looks like. So I'm a, from a business background, so um, I've just used the marketing mix here as an example. So uh, we have our explanation here on the marketing mix. And then down here we have um, where we've used the, the accordion content type. So the student then can click into the four P's of the marketing mix. So it will uh, show the expanded um, explanation there for each of those, um, each of those elements. And um, so then I will just move on and create that in um, in a live. So if I just go in here, so I'm, I'm editing the, the page, the Canvas page, and I just go down underneath the text um, and put my cursor where I want to add the H5P content type to. So, and then I just click on H5P here. And I go to add content and I just put in accordion. And then just click on it and the uh, accordion um, editor then is going to pop up. So the first thing here you will see is a title and you just, um, this title is not seen by the um, by the student. Um, it's more for, as you can see, they're searching reports and copyright. So I just put accordion marketing mix there. So now you want to add each of your panels here. So uh, the first panel is product and I have my text here. So let's join, um, add that quickly. So when you're uh, you're taking text from another source, it just control V, um, adding the next panel here, which is the price. And add my text. And control V. And I want to add two more panels. So I want to add my promotion. And that text. And finally, I want to add my last panel, which is a uh, place. And my explanation on place. Okay, so now I've added my four panels. I've got product price, promotion, and place. So really it's just a title and the text that you have to add for each of the panels. And then you just save and insert. And now you can see your accordion is uh, live there. Okay, and we just save it then on Canvas, on the Canvas page. And here we go. Okay, so the next example I'm going to show you is an image hotspot. Um, and th in this for this one, I've chosen a SWOT analysis uh, to demonstrate it. So again, we have our explanation here. And instead of just, you know, um, adding, um, you know, a long kind of section of text, um, you could add an image and then have information hotspots on it. So um, here we have um, the explanation of what strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats mean. Okay, so, um, you know, you could use this for lots of different, um, lots of different learning material. Um, I just created an image there on Canva, a very simple image. So it just means that um, it just makes it more interactive uh, for the student. So I just uh, go into my demonstration section here now. Um, so let's go in here. And again, just go underneath your, whatever your text is and go to H5P. And again, we just go to add content. And we want to use the image hotspot. Oh, thanks Ruth. Um, are you sharing the, the links for me there? Sorry, I meant to say that. Um, no problem. No problem, thanks. So Ruth's, Ruth's sharing the links to these, um, these features um in the the chat and um i will also send them out on the recording afterwards so now we're in the um the image hotspot um option so again we just need to add our title so um i had this already done so image hotspot for swot analysis we want to add our image 
here. I had one prepared earlier. Um, you want to add your alt text here for the background image. So for accessibility, so I have already had that already. So that's um, that's my alt text there. So then with the icon, um, so the icon is the the like the eye and the information kind of icon that showed up there on the original example. Um, you can have a predefined icon which have, are provided by H5P or you can um, upload your own icon as well. You have the option to do that, but I just use the, the predefined icon there, make things as easy as possible. Um, then you, you choose what kind of an icon um, you want to use. You have an option there. So in this one, I'm going to use the information op option. So I'm giving um students just the option to click into each of the each of the um of the points so now we go down to our image and to add the hotspots what you need to do is you see there's this green flashing circle in the middle of the the image so you just click on this and you move it to where you want to add the hotspot to so i want to first of all add it to um strengths and what i do here is i want to add the um the header for for the information so strengths is the kind of main title of um of this uh hotspot and then i'm just going to add my text here so um with the pop-up content then that you want to pop up you have an option to use audio image text or video and for this introduction session i'm using text and i just add my text here um, then I want to add another hotspot. So again, I need to decide where I want to add this hotspot. So I go to weaknesses. And again, I just add my header. And I choose what type of um, content I want to show up. And it's again, it's text. And I just take the text for weaknesses. And another hotspot, again, go to the green circle and move it to opportunities. And I have opportunities there and I want to click select text again. And I go to the text for opportunities. And the final hotspot is for, for threats. So um, again, add text and then select uh, or add my text to explain uh, threats. So that's my four hotspots I've um, included. So strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. And I just save and insert. And you can see that your um, image hotspot now has popped up and then save it on canvas. So now the student has a nice um, option to click into each of those options. Okay, so um, our next um, uh, example is our um, multiple choice question. And for this question, I've used the Porter's Five Forces uh, framework. Um, so I've just done a little explanation here and then I want to just test uh, or let the student test their knowledge on their um, on the Portis by Forces. Um, so they have the question here and then for uh, possible answers and the which ele what element of Portis by Forces relates to the threat of increased prices on your products raw materials. So the option or the the right answer there is supplier power submit. Uh, so the student gets an, um, a detail to say, well done, top marks, and they get one other one there. So um, just to go into uh, create that, again, I just move down uh, beyond my text and add the um, multiple choice question. Okay, so it pops up pretty quickly. Again, I will just use my title, multiple choice, Porter's Five Forces here. And I want to just add my question. And just put a question mark there. 
And then I want to add each of my options. So first one I have is of substitution. Um, and you can see here, there's an option to click correct. So whatever the correct answer to this uh, question is, you just tick on that. So obviously threat of substitution isn't the right one there. Um, the right one is supplier power. So I'll just click on correct for the next, for this. Uh, so just click correct there and add the options. Um, so two more options. Competitive rivalry, and I leave that unticked because that's not the correct answer. And the final option then is threat of new entrants. And I leave that unticked. So I've got four options. I've got my question, and then I've got threat of substitution, supplier power, which is the correct answer, competitive rivalry, and uh, threat of new entrants. And that's all my options. And in the uh, feedback area here, um, in this situation, it, it's a kind of a yes or no or a correct or incorrect answer. So I just put zero to 99 as a sorry, wrong answer. And then for your right answer, well done, top marks. And you just save and insert. And you should be able to see your, your, your question there now. And again, save on your Canvas page. So that's the um, three demonstrations. Um, finally, I just want to show you um, what an interactive video looks like. And I just need to close down one screen here, sorry. And um, for this. Okay, can you still see that okay there, Ruth? Yes, no problem, Marion. Okay, great. So with the interactive video, you can upload a video and you can add interactions throughout the video. Um, as I mentioned, you can decide when to display them and when for them, when you want them to fade away. So in this video, um, I have an image that pops up uh, with an example of a link. This, th sorry, this video is just a demonstration on giving and receiving a link LinkedIn recommendation. So um, an image pops up with an example of a LinkedIn recommendation just so for the learner to see what that looks like. And that displays between 12 and 17 seconds. Um, then a link to a LinkedIn help article on, on giving and receiving a recommendation that pops up between 30 and 35 seconds. And then at the end, there is um, an option to choose the correct statement. So the learner would be asked to uh, select um, the correct sta statement from a series of statements. Um, so um, you can see along the, the bottom here, the little white dots, they show that there are interactions in these points uh, during the um, during the, the video. And I'll just play this route and may, you might let me know if you can hear it or not. Hi there, in this lesson we're going to look at the recommendation section of the LinkedIn profile. We're going to look at re requesting a recommendation from someone else and also we look at giving a recommendation to another LinkedIn connection. So as usual we're looking at the profile page here and we're going to just scroll down the page to the recommendation section which is down at the very end. So here we can see the recommendation section. And as you could see at the moment, I have received 30, 34 recommendations here on my profile and I've given nine recommendations. I'm just moving down to the end of the video to show you the, the summary, the statements uh, area as well. Uh, from somebody else and also how to give a recommendation to somebody else. So well done and I'll see you in the next lesson. OK, so this is your option then to add summary statements at the end. So the learner will see now you've watched the video and um, please choose the correct statements from the following set of statements. So that's our um, that's our interactive video. So um, just to go back to my um, slides there for a second. I'll just talk about some resources. Can you see that okay, Ruth? Perfect, Marion. Great. 
Okay, so we have a YouTube channel. Um, the Tell Department has a YouTube channel where we have lots of uh, training recordings there um, on H5P. Um, and this uh, training will also be be like or will be on our YouTube channel as well. And I will also send you out a recording. Um, also, we have instruction documents on all the H5P uh, content types um here on our uh, tell website and i'll send you a link to that as well afterwards and if you uh, need any further assistance you can contact us at edtech at mtu.ie um and that completes our training 